Hey guys, welcome to the Houston Killy YouTube channel. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, welcome back. It's I'm sorry there's been so many weeks in between our episodes here, but it's been a little crazy. So I know you guys saw that Kilby Motorsports kicked off, and you can see Mr. Jesse back there practicing his welding right now. That's how crazy we've been. I've been trying to get him up to speed so uh, he can help me out on more and more kits and projects and stuff like that. And plus, he's been wanting to learn. So we've been kind of doing some trading out. I've been showing him tricks and. Uh, and some tips and he's been helping me out with uh, the builds and all the different projects we've got going on right now so uh right behind me here today in this video there's going to be all kinds of different stuff going on but uh you guys are going to see some uh tig welding and some tips and tricks on tig welding and today's project i'm going to be building a rear end so i've already got all of the pieces pretty much fabbed up and uh, tacked into place and then we're just <laughs> going to do some tigging and I've had several people comment on asking questions. One, how do I grind my tungsten? Two, what types of cups do I use? And uh, tips with the TIG welder. So uh, we're gonna go over some of that stuff today and kind of have some cool music playing in the background while we lay down some beads, give Jesse a hard time while we're welding, and uh, you know, just go from there. So uh, we'll show you guys all kinds of different things today. So let's get after it. Alrighty guys, so uh, let's talk about this tungsten here real quick. So uh, as you guys can see, we've got a dedicated sander just for TIG only, meaning for our tungsten, all right? You wanna keep a very, very clean sanding disc or sanding rock just for your tungsten. If your tungsten's nasty, your welds are gonna be nasty and you're gonna be really aggravated. And this is like, the first thing you want to do before you even sit down and start welding is get all your tungsten clean. And what I like to do is, uh, this is just a tube from like uh, a filler rod tube and I use it to keep all my tungsten in. So I can just pile a bunch of them down in there. It keeps them clean and it's got a little cap on top. I know there's a lot of fancy stuff out there, but as you can see, this thing's been used a lot, but it keeps my stuff clean. But uh, how I'm gonna sand this, um, I'm gonna use a rock. Um, a lot of guys out there use a flapper disc on a grinder, which is completely fine. Uh, the only problem with that is if you use that flapper disc for anything else and then go to sand your tungsten again, now your tungsten is contaminated and it's gonna cause problems. Uh, you can you know, make a flapper disc just for this and just have a grinder designated for that which is completely fine, but I've kind of found out with this, I can make a better and more cleaner point. And um, it's just easier to keep this thrown to the side in the garage versus as keeping everybody's hands off of a grinder. So uh, let's uh, grind this down here and I'll show you a quick little trick on how I do that. So a lot of people just do it by hand and I like using a drill. And it doesn't matter what size drill you use as long as it'll hold your tungsten and it works pretty good and it's super super quick and the name of the game time is money so uh let's grind this down boom just like that now we have a very sharp point a very clean point and now i just need to do the rest of my tungsten pieces and uh, we can rock and roll and again i like going ahead and grinding up you know about 10 of these things before I even start welding because you just need them and you're going to go through them and you always want to keep a good clean piece of tungsten instead of having to just stop go stop go stop go you can just throw a new piece in and keep it rocking so let's grind the rest of these up and uh, then we'll talk about the cups I talk about gas lenses a lot and I found out that these things work really really good um, it's really taken my TIG welds to the next level and it's also helped me keep the tungsten cleaner. And uh, I've kind of found out with TIG welding, the longer your weld and the more and more you're on and off the gas, um, you kind of find out it gets your tungsten nasty. So uh, the gas lens kind of helps with that. So uh, let me show you some of that. 
So this is just your kind of your basic gas lens here. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the cups that we're gonna use for it. And I happen to buy these things by the pack. Um, I don't mess around just buying one or two unless I'm testing out something. But uh, basically what happens here and how this works, your tungsten is inside this hole here, okay? And your cup screws over this, all right? And this is up inside of your TIG torch, all right? Now, like using these, I've got some uh, big Bertha ones. They're really, really big. I'm gonna test out today too. You can kind of see how big these things are. I mean, you can almost fit this other one inside it. That's how big, but uh, um, I've heard that these work pretty good for uh, chromoly, so I'm gonna test them out and see how they work. And I've got the big gas lenses for them as well, but they're really big. Now, you're asking yourself why, or does it matter how big a one you use? Now, I like using the big ones, but the problem is, depending on how tight of an area you're in, it might not work out for you, and the smaller ones work better for that situation. But uh, now they do make some micro ones, it's real itty bitty. Those things work good too, and again, get yourself a gas lens. I'm telling you, it changes your life for TIG welding. So uh, let's look at the torches here real quick. All right, so torches. Uh, today I'm gonna use, it's just like a standard, they call it like a number 17 style uh, torch head. And uh, there it is right there. This one's got a flex head on it, which is pretty awesome. And also has adjustable gas valve right here. So you can turn this and it'll adjust the gas for you right here. And normally I keep this wide open, okay? It's just something, if I wanna control gas, I'm gonna control it on the regulator on the tank. Okay, that's just what I like to do. Everybody's got their own preferences, okay? Now this particular torch here, it has a FUPA cup on it. We're gonna use it some too. And what I'm wanting to do today, while I'm working on this rear end, before I TIG weld on anything, I do some practice pieces. And again, I've said this several times in several videos, it helps your quality out a bunch and um, you know this rear end right here is going to a customer so I got to make sure it looks good and that's got some very nice welds on it and plus we're gonna do some photo ops with this thing too so it can go on the website and that way when people see it, it's like man this thing's got some radical welds on it but uh, it's taken a lot of time and a lot of money to figure out how to do that so that's why I'm sharing this information with you so hopefully it'll help you guys out too if you got some welding projects going on so uh, the TIG torch here again you can see in the center See here, yeah. There's your tungsten, that's what we just sharpened. This is your cup, and today, FUPA cup, we're gonna test it out some and compare against those other ones. So uh, let's get set up here and see what we can come up with. Alrighty guys, so uh, this is our project for today and we got a ton of welding to do. Now in this video, I'm not gonna show you guys how to do all the measuring and how I'm just doing welding in this video today. And uh, we'll take it to the front up here so you can see it. Or I guess you would call this actually the rear of the rear end, I guess. But uh, we've got our KCD brackets on there. Uh, you can, guys can buy any of our bracketry, both front and rear suspension components, on our website. Uh, this will be something that we will be offering in the future for uh, Extreme Series rear ends, I do believe. Right now it's not on there, but you guys will see that coming very soon. But uh, our brackets here, you can see our four link holes there, shock mounts back here, anti roll mount there. Uh, this rear end will have a fill hole here, a drain plug in the bottom, and uh, right now we're just going to get some welding done on this bad boy and let you guys see it. So Alright guys, we're going to test out the FUPA here and uh, see what this looks like and then we'll test out the others. Alright guys, that was for our first whack there and that's not too bad right there. Uh, we're going to test out those other two cups, see which one we like the best. Uh, it's just some practice eighth inch stuff and uh, we'll be doing a lot of eighth inch on this thing and a lot of quarter inch stuff. So right around that neighborhood, we know these settings are going to work pretty good. So that looks pretty good there on the FUPA, which uh, of course we know is going to do good. But uh, let's test out those others, see if we like those better. All right, so we got our big Bertha here. Uh, we've got our collet on the inside of it, gas lens. And then um, we got our little white piece here. Now you must have these. They sell these in different sizes for different types of cups. So when you go to the welding shop, make sure you get that too. And then uh, you just simply screw it together. 
good and tight. Now you got a good seal on there. And again, yeah, it makes this bigger, but I do like these. You can grip them pretty good, and then you can really kind of put some nice welds down with them. Plus, um, I found out with certain thicknesses of metal, these don't get as hot, and uh, you can hold on to them a little bit better by actually getting closer to the um, tungsten while you're holding it versus some of the smaller cups, you can't do that. But uh, let's put some tungsten in there. Uh, put our end cap on. Just like that. All right, I know I'm gonna stick it out about that far right there. Right there. Yeah, let's test that out, see if that does. We like it if we don't like it. Okay, yeah, that looked pretty good. Also, it looks just about the same as the FUPA. Worked pretty good. Once you guys see it there. Yeah, it worked pretty good. Now, on that one, I could tell it was a little bit easier for me to hold. And um, again, there again, I like this using these big ones like this in areas I can get in. But sometimes you can't get this big of a cup in tight areas, so just keep that in mind. All right, guys, now we've got our next size down, and uh, I've used these a bunch, and they work pretty good too. And are a whole lot smaller than the other ones you saw. And uh, again, we just done the same thing over again. Use the same type of collet. Got our tungsten in there, and. Uh, Let's do some welding here, see if we like it or if we don't like it for this thickness of metal. Tighten down our tungsten here. All right, that one worked pretty good too. So all of these work really, really well. Uh, the coloration looks good in all of them. They penetrated really, really well. What you guys see is here on that third one there. Boom, I hope the camera clears up. Yeah, so you can see it. So that'll look really, really well. And again, just a test piece to make sure settings are good. And the settings work great on all these. So uh, we know that if I've got a really tight spot and I need to change to a smaller cup or something, I can get in there. So uh, let's get after it. I believe I'm gonna use the uh, Mega Cup on these or the Big Bertha one. And uh, that way I can keep my hands cool as possible because we've got a lot of welding to do. So let's get after it. Boom, not bad. I like it, I like it. All right guys, so we got some welding done here. Uh, Jesse, he's back here in the background grinding up all kinds of stuff right now, getting everything cleaned up for this rear end. Uh, before I show you some of these welds, it turned out pretty good. But uh, I just kind of wanted to give you guys another little tip here. So uh, see my arm here, I've got these sleeves on, but they're not connected to my shirt. Now uh, you can buy these things at several different welding shops and they make all different types of them, but um, I'd had a hard time finding something that was long enough for my arms because I'm so tall. But uh, the company that these are made off of, let's see here, they're called Tenic Teeth is the name of the company there and uh, work pretty good. So we'll keep on welding here and uh, let me show you some of these here. Boom, check it out right there. Looking really good. Check these out over here. Oh yeah, let's keep on rocking here.
Alrighty guys, we are moving forward on this thing. And I need to tell you, we have got a ton of hours wrapped up in this bad boy right now. This thing take a ton of time, but it's looking good. We got our king of mess badge on there. And this thing is looking nice. Very nice welds. I'm very, very happy way this thing is turning out. And we'll just keep on rocking here. And again, you know, I'm not gonna show too many details on this. I won't bore you guys with it. I'll show some cool welding videos here and uh, just some tips and tricks on the jig welder and uh, we'll just keep on rocking here but uh, uh, before anybody asks me how much one of these things cost um, you guys will find that out on the website I'm not sure quite yet what we're going to have listed yet but that is coming and uh, you guys will know very very soon just keep it rocking Alrighty guys, I just wanted to wrap this video up here with um, a little bit of preview of our KMS rear end all bolted up to a chassis we about to have go out here at Killer Motor Sport. You know, kind of got to do a little plug here on the video and uh, just kind of give you guys an overview of what this thing is going on. But I can't give you much on the chassis right now. Uh, that stuff is kind of undercover for our customer, but I can show you this stuff here. And uh, so again, our KCD bracketry, KMS housing, also our KCD brackets on the chassis there as well. So this thing is looking really, really good. Uh, be sure to check out KillyMotorsports.com. Until next time, guys, you all have a good one.